Well, I'm a visitor to Armenia. I've been for a few times and I'm really excited about what's going on in this country. Uh, you've got some fantastic companies in the form of uh, companies like PixArt, uh, Teamable, Crisp. Uh, these are all Armenian startups who are building global products. And I think that's the key thing uh, I want to get across is that it's totally possible and, uh, and Armenia is totally capable of building global technology platforms here, from here in Armenia, from cities like Yerevan. Traditionally, uh, startups have succeeded in, in areas like software as a service, enterprise, B2B, and that's been a, a, a enormous explosion of, uh, of industry uh, in the last 10, 15 years, and of course in consumer products. But, but now I think startups are doing other things like the merging hardware, software, um, and I think some of the most uh, bigger areas of, uh, of development in the next few years will be things like climate technology, because the climate is you know, a massive, massive issue. The climate crisis is a massive issue. And now we're seeing startups doing software as a service in climate enterprise or climate software. Um, and uh, also hardware as well. So climate is going to be a massive new area. The definition of a startup is not like the definition of a small business. Startups are built to be acquired or to IPO effectively, to exit. That's what they're built for. And that's why venture capital is such a big feature of startups, uh, because it's all about high growth um, uh, very much. Uh, when you build a small business, you tend to build a company that literally runs on revenues, you get profit and loss, and it kind of like it's what they, in the US they call a mom and pop business, uh, like a corner store. Um, but startups and technology startups in particular are really about high growth, they're about an exit. Small startups can compete against uh, larger companies uh, by being fast moving, being able to make decisions quickly, uh, by having access to large platforms on which to build for obvious reasons. And going global from day one, I think, is really important. Often you see startups fail because they think too small and think about a market which is uh, just too local. The advice I give to entrepreneurs and startups in terms of how they present themselves is to um, be clear, practice. Uh, often you'll see on uh, events like this or on TV the way that startups present themselves is that they're very, very good at uh, telling their story. And the reason you do that is because they're, they're practice over and over again. It's not that hard to do. Um, uh, if, you, if you stumble over your words and you can't get it out, then you really just have not thought about what you're doing. You have, haven't thought about um, how to present yourself. And the other big piece of advice I give to entrepreneurs is to start with the problem first. Effectively, what you're doing is you're storytelling. You're telling a story. So you want to convince somebody that the problem you're solving with your startup is important. So you need to get that across. You need to describe the problem, how you're solving the problem, what the technologies you're using, what kind of team you've built, what you're doing next if you're raising money, if you're launching something, and then where you want to go next. And those, kind, those kinds of elements are the things you want to get across and just practice, it's really very simple. And you can do that in 30 seconds, you can do it in two minutes, and you can do it in five minutes, whatever you like. Yeah.